In a new update, Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink has revealed the future of human vision. They call it blindsight. And while the idea might resemble something from the fictional world of Star Trek, Neuralink is working hard to bring this technology into real life, and it's happening right now. The company's latest update was broadcast from inside their surgical robot workshop. These are machines that have spent the past year implanting computer chips into real human brains. Neuralink now has seven human patients living with the implant, four with spinal cord injuries, three with ALS. All of them are using the Link device independently from home. Some are logging more than 100 hours a week, with an average usage of about 50 hours. These aren't test sessions, they are real-world hours, and they are scaling fast. And for the first time, we have a roadmap for what Neuralink plans to accomplish with these human trials. By the end of this year, Neuralink implants will move from the motor control region of the brain to implants that target the speech cortex. This would hopefully allow Neuralink to decode words directly from thoughts in real time. That means instead of using Neuralink to control a keyboard to type things out, they simply go straight from brain to text or AI-assisted computer voice. This will be interesting to see how it plays out, because it's one of the few things that Neuralink can't test with a monkey. They don't have language, so it's going straight to human trials. This is also where the capabilities of Neuralink start to draw some legitimate concern, because at this point, on some level, the computer can essentially read your thoughts. Pretty freaky. But that's just the warm-up. In 2026, the first blindsight patient receives visual input directly to the brain using 3,000 electrodes and no working eyes required. This is something that Neuralink has already been testing on monkeys for years, and they feel very confident that it's ready for the first human subject. Then in 2027, Neuralink takes it up a notch by adding support for multiple implants in one person, including speech, vision, and motor implants, all working together and pushing the brain-computer connection to 10,000 channels. And then just one year later in 2028, they are aiming to connect over 25,000 electrodes, allowing for full brain access and making the first step toward direct AI integration with the human body and mind. So that's a lot of crazy stuff to accomplish in just three years, and some of this is pretty wild, but the standout of the list has to be blindsight. Not only because we're talking about literally curing blindness or straight up providing vision to people who don't have eyes, this is all set to begin just a few months from now. So here's what that looks like. Blindsight requires two new pieces of hardware. The first is a pair of camera-equipped glasses, essentially the same thing that we've already seen in those meta Ray-Bans. So users won't actually look like Commander Geordi LaForge from Star Trek, which is probably better for them. The whole point of this is to help people with disabilities live a normal life, not look like a space alien. Those camera glasses connect wirelessly with a smartphone, which is going to translate the digital image into input signals, which then get sent via Bluetooth into the Neuralink implant. This is a new chip. Neuralink calls it S2, designed for stimulation of the brain. Every other Neuralink that has been implanted in a human has been an output device. It reads the electrical signals from the brain and sends that information to a computer. The S2 will take computer information and convert it into electrical signals that get delivered into the brain tissue, essentially thousands of microelectric shocks that stimulate the neurons into action. To accomplish this, S2 is bigger and more powerful than the standard N1 implant. It also uses new electrode wires. The threads are sewn into the brain by the robot. For stimulation, the threads are much wider, still microscopic, but in comparison to the standard threads, they are chunky. And that includes much larger electrodes as well. The extra size means lower impedance, which allows for a safer and more effective delivery of electric charge into the brain. The specific region of the brain here is the visual cortex. It's around in the back of your head, and it has some pretty complex geography. Most brain-computer interface, including Neuralink, is designed to just penetrate the outer layer of the brain, reaching about 2 or 3 millimeters into the tissue. And you can reach the visual cortex from that surface level, but it only gives you access to the very center of a person's field of view. So you can stimulate vision, but only inside the little circle right in the middle, which is not very effective. The regions of the visual cortex that are responsible for wider fields of view are buried progressively deeper into the brain tissue that's folded up into a valley of gray matter known as the calcarine fissure. 
So in order to reach those neurons and expand the field of view, Neuralink threads need to penetrate up to 40 millimeters deep into the brain. That's an inch and a half. And this demonstrates something that only Neuralink can do. There are many other brain-computer interface devices that plant electrodes in the cerebral cortex, but all of them are limited in where they can actually place those electrodes. A traditional Utah array uses a bed of tiny, rigid spikes that's obviously not going down into a fissure. A BCI like the Synchron, which is widely used now, can only enter the brain through a major blood vessel, which also limits where it can actually go. Neuralink's surgical robot and custom-made electrode threads can reach any part of the brain at any depth, and to help them see even deeper into the brain than ever before, Neuralink has even developed their own MRI and CT scan imaging machine. Now, here's what this all looks like. Neuralink begins by calibrating the blindside hardware. What they do is flash dots of light into the subject's visual field. Just three simple points of light to begin with, and the subject uses their hand to point out where they saw the light. That helps to identify which electrodes are positioned on what region of the visual cortex. And this is what the patient would be able to see with a fully calibrated and functional blindside device. It's essentially just white dots on a black field with a dense group of small dots in the center of the visual field for higher levels of detail, and larger distributed dots around the outside for peripheral vision. It's not much, but it's a pretty great start. Elon Musk says that in time, this technology will allow people to have superhero levels of vision, seeing the world in ultraviolet light or infrared far beyond the comprehension of any normal human being. This is all building on the success of Neuralink's first product, Telepathy. It reads signals from the motor cortex, the part of the brain that control voluntary movement, and it translates them into digital commands. With telepathy, participants can move a cursor, click, type, swipe, and even game using only their thoughts. A third use case for BCI that the company is exploring focuses on regulating human emotional and cognitive states. It would target people's mood, chronic pain, memory, and other internal conditions. These applications would rely on deeper, more sensitive implants in the areas of the brain most involved in emotion and autonomic regulation, known as the limbic and sulcal regions. Musk hinted that these interfaces may one day act as a stabilizing force for psychological health, using real-time feedback to smooth out emotional distress the same way a pacemaker maintains heart rhythm for patients with heart disease. The strategy at its core is about two things, accessing more neurons and reaching more brain regions. That's the direction Neuralink plans to scale. By increasing the density of electrodes and the areas of the brain they can target, the company hopes to build what it calls a whole brain interface, a system that can read from or write to any part of the brain. That's the long game. Neuralink says it's no longer building for dozens of implants, but for thousands and then millions. The goal is nothing less than industrialization, and they are applying something called Moore's Law, which states that computing power doubles roughly every two years to the brain itself. Still, the real test isn't the roadmap, it's the users. Nolan, the first participant, now uses the device daily to study languages and math, type notes, and work full days without assistance. Brad, who lost his ability to speak and move due to ALS, can now leave the house and communicate outdoors. This is something he hadn't done in six years. Alex, who once couldn't write, now signs his name using a robotic arm driven by his brain signals. All three joined in a live multiplayer session of Mario Kart. This is the first known example of five people playing a video game together using only their brain to control their character. Later, RJ and Alex pushed it even further, taking on a round of Call of Duty, using joysticks mapped to distinct neural commands. For all the technical progress on display, the company was clear. This is just the beginning. According to the company, Neuralink's current data link is still the cognitive equivalent of a 56k modem, which a few decades ago was how folks could get online through their phones. It was slow, but it worked. Sorta. That's where we're at right now, just enough to prove out the idea, but not yet in a place to take advantage of the future possibilities. The long-term goal is something closer to broadband with a gigabit class throughput, whole brain coverage, and bi-directional communication between human thought and digital systems. This is more than a performance target, it's a strategic bet on the future of cognition itself. Musk laid out what he called the three-layer model of the mind, the limbic system where emotions live the cortex, where reasoning happens, and the digital layer, which humans have only just begun to build. The real challenge, in his view, isn't building better machines, it's giving humans the bandwidth to keep up. 
He framed Neuralink as an answer to that, a way to close the input-output bottleneck between brain and device and to align the collective will of humanity with the tools they are creating. Musk opened the event by reflecting on the mystery of how atoms and chemistry give rise to awareness. The fact that we, made of star stuff, can ask questions about our own minds. It's not just poetic. Neuralink, he suggested, might help illuminate that mystery by letting us interface directly with AI superintelligence. At the same time, he cautioned against runaway expectations. The system is not going global tomorrow. Progress will be slow, highly regulated, and visible every step of the way. And so far, Musk added, every human surgery has gone according to plan. We haven't missed yet. Neuralink has already secured international approval for its prime trial, with sites now authorized in the United States, the UK, Canada, and the UAE. This trial is moving beyond medical centers and into real-world environments where people live, work, and move. The company also emphasized that this wasn't a pitch for money. We're very well-funded, Musk said plainly. What they want now are engineers, people who can solve impossible challenges, build at scale, and push the platform forward. 